Hello student. Now, before we begin this particular topic today, what I want you to do is to ensure you've got all your equipment with you. Okay? Have you got your green pen? Have you got your pen too? Have you got your ruler? Okay? So I would like you to pause the video, go grab all of this equipment, and then click on play. Okay? All right. Now, last time we we're actually looking at the application of change, changes of state. Okay. One thing we couldn't do at the end was the fact that we had some exit questions for you to do. Now we're going to use these exit questions as a retriever questions for you. Okay. So what I want you to do is to actually answer these questions. It's actually a one word answer. So these are eight questions. I'll give you roughly three minutes because it's not too long to answer the question. Again, I want you to pause the video and when you're done, click and play to see the answers. Okay, let's go. So the first question, when a solid changes to a liquid, what term do we use to describe that? Now, let's see if this is gonna work for us. Melting. The process by which a solid is changing to liquid is called melting, okay? Ice melting, okay, to become liquid. Now, the next question is asking you, when a gas changes to a liquid, what is that called? Condensing, okay? Condensing. Again, when a gas changes to a liquid, it's called condensing, if I'm making sense. Now, condensing is actually a process of actually reducing the temperature, dropping the temperature down. Okay? Now, number three, particles vibrate in a fixed position. What do we call that? The answer is actually solid. Okay? When particles vibrate in a fixed position, they are known as solid. Okay? That is the state of matter of that particular particle or object. Number four, a way of demonstrating a scientific experiment is called Modeling, okay? Remember we showed some examples of modeling using 2Ds and 3D structures to show examples, okay? So it's called modeling. Number five says particles are far apart from each other. What is that called? Okay? The answer is actually gas. The fact that they are far apart from each other. All right, number six says when a solid changes to a gas, what do we call that? We call that sublimation, okay? That is really, really interesting. Solid changing to gas straight away is called sublimation. All right? If you don't know that, this is the time for you to write it down using your green pen. Now, number seven, this takes the shape of the bottom of the container. Now, this refers back to about two, three topics ago that we did, and the answer is actually liquid. Liquid usually takes the shape of the bottom of the container. Number eight says can easily be compressed. We know that solid cannot easily be compressed. So what is your answer? Gas. Gas can easily be compressed. Water can be compressed, but not that easy. But liquid or gas can easily be compressed. Again, mark everything and give yourself a total mark. All right, now, this is our main topic today. Today, we're going to be talking about knowing the differences between a compound and a mixture. Again, I would like you to pause the video and actually write down your learning objective. Okay, when, are you done? Brilliant. Now what I would like you to do is actually to answer these questions. Have a look at this diagram. A, B, C, and D, okay? And answer the three questions. Number one, which of the above diagrams shows an atom? Number two, which of the above diagrams shows an element? Number three, explain how you knew which was an atom and which was an element, okay? And there's a challenge question also for you to answer. So again, I'm gonna give you around four minutes. I'd like you to pause the video answer the questions, and when you're ready, click on play. Okay, let's begin. So, which of the above diagram shows an atom? A is actually showing us three different things. B is showing us, well, A is showing us one particular type of atom, but they're like three. B is showing us two different types. 
C is showing us about two different tiles, but there's more than the other, and D is showing just one. So which of the diagram above shows an atom? And the answer is D. Okay? We're going to explain that as we move on. I hope you did get that right. If you didn't, please correct that mistake. Number two says, which of the above diagram shows an atom? The answer is actually A. Oh, sorry. Which of the above diagram shows an element? The answer is A. The reason why, we're going to talk about it in a sec. And that is where it's going to fall onto question three, which is explain how you knew. So let's say you got everything right. How did you know that that one is an element? How did you know that one is an atom? Now, what's quite interesting is that atoms make up everything and is the smallest amount of substance that can exist. And from looking at the diagrams we've been given, D is the smallest amount of substance that we can see. Okay, if that makes sense. Now, elements is actually made up of one kind of atom only. So if you look at B, you can see that there are two different types of atom. This is represented by the black and the white. C also is showing two different types of atom, the black and the white, even though there are more white atoms there. But A is showing only one type of atom, but they're like free atom, free atoms of it. So the answer is actually A. An element is made up of one kind of atom only. So there can be four, there can be five, but the fact that it's made up of one atom is made is called an element, if that makes sense. Okay. And so the question for the challenge says a molecule, a molecule is two or more atoms joined together. Okay, they can be the same element or different elements. Which of the diagram shows a molecule and the answer is actually a okay b and c the fact that they're made up of two or more elements joined together and I, like i said they can be the same or they can be different okay again pause the video give yourself a mark and using your green pen and let's continue okay and obviously that's that voice telling us copper nu and nitrogen are actually showing what elements they are all right so Success criteria. Like I said, today we're actually going to be looking at differences between a compound and a mixture. Okay, and to develop this knowledge, we'll be, we should be able to define a compound and a mixture, and secure the knowledge through to identify a compound mixture from a particle diagram, and hopefully, you should be able to recognize examples of compounds and mixture. Now, introduction to uh, compound and mixture. Okay, element, compound, mixture. It is so important that we know what these things are. Okay. During my explanation, when we're going to be talking about this, it is so important that you define these keywords at the back of your book or inside your book. So it would be great for you to actually take your time, pause the video and write this down so we can continue. All right, let's begin. Now, atom. Now, like we said earlier in the retrieval questions, atoms are literally the smallest amount of substances that can exist. In the overall world, it's the smallest I want to solve it that can exist. So you cannot actually see them. If it's a struggle to see cells, well, it's going to be a big struggle to actually see an atom because it's way smaller. All right, so let's use this as an atom. Okay? These are our atoms. All right? That is one atom, and that is an element. An element is made up of one, two or more atoms. Okay? Or one type of... Well, just to rephrase that question... An element is made up of one type of atom. Like you can see, atom A is represented by purple. And if you look at the element, you can see that there are about six to seven um, atom A. Okay? That is still an element, if I'm making sense. Again, an element is made up of only one type of atom. It is so important that you understand that. Now, let's talk about elements generally. Okay? Like we said, an element is a substance that is made up of only one type of atom. It cannot be broken down into simpler substances. Now, that is so important. That is why it's been underlined there. An atom, an element cannot be broken down into simpler, simpler substances because it's made up of only one type of atom. Okay, let's have a look. Again, this is also representing what we're talking about and it cannot be broken down. So the question is, are there any examples of elements? Can you think of an example of an element? Where is the list of elements found? That is the big question I'm going to be asking you, okay, as we go through this. Now, let's have a look at this, okay? Let's have a look at this. Now, what we can see here, okay, what we can see here is actually elements. Elements. They are made up of the same type of atom, one type of atom. A is showing us one type, 
C is showing us one type, J is showing us one type. Okay, and you can see that they've got bonds holding them together. Remember when we're doing state of matter, we're talking about the, the force, the bonds holding these atoms together. Okay, same thing as these elements as well. They've got bonds holding them together. And what's quite interesting about C is it's got a double bond which is something you're going to be learning about when you get to year 10 or get to college if you're doing chemistry. Now, moving on. Now, the question is what are these lines, like I said? There are bonds, like I said. There are forces that actually hold atoms together. Nothing comes together without a bond holding them, okay? That is what we call a compound. A compound, bonds are holding them together. And I'm sure you're wondering, okay, so what is the mixture then? We're going to question what mixture is in the first place. Now, look at B. B, G, K, and L. You can see they've got different types of atoms there. So, we can say it's a compound. All right? It's a compound. They've got two different types, two or three different types of atoms. Look at B. It's got a black and white one. G has got a black and white one. K has got a black and white L has got a blue, black, and white, okay? But what's quite interesting is it doesn't matter the way they are arranged. The fact that they've got two or more different type of atom makes them a compound, if I'm making sense. Now, compounds are literally two or more different elements chemically bonded together, joined together, chemically joined together, and they're not easily separated. It requires a lot of force to actually break them down. For example, water. Water is made up of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. It requires force to actually break the bond, if I'm making sense. Okay? So we can look at this and ask yourself, um, how many atoms make up this particular um, compound there? How many atoms makes up this particular compound? And the same thing for that, what do you think this is? I'm sure you know that already, that that is water, like I mentioned. So you can see um, this middle one actually gives you a structure to represent different types of atoms. Or different types of elements the same thing for the first one as well okay now examples of compounds we've got water made up of hydrogen and oxygen salts sodium and chlorine sugar carbon hydrogen and oxygen and carbon dioxide is made up of carbon and oxygen okay and vinegar which you've got in your house is made up of carbon hydrogen and oxygen which is quite the same as sugar but the structure again differs now Let's look at this. Mixture. What's the mixture itself? You see, the mixture is when they're not chemically bonded together. As you can see in E, we've got different um, elements, yes, but they're not exactly bonded together. There's no bond holding them together. That's what you can see in D, in H, and in I as well. Now, mixture. Basically, molecules of elements or compounds that are not chemically bonded but can physically be separated. Hear that again? Molecules of elements or compounds are basically not chemically bonded, but they can physically be separated from each other. An example is air, sand, cement, seawater, and inky water. Again, they are not chemically bonded, so they can easily be separated. So, so there's a, long, a lot of ways they could do that. So molecules, which is going to be the last one we'll talk about before we move to the part two, okay? Molecules are basically two or more atoms joined together and can be the same element or different element. Again, it can be the same or different element. For example, okay, let's have a look. This is an element, it's also a molecule, loads of the same atom. A is a compound, two different um, atoms, it's also a molecule, okay? They are both molecules, if that makes sense. So it's so important that you do not uh, mistake it. I would like you to pause the video and try and answer this question. All right, are we done? Now let's mark our answer. The answer is actually two, okay? A, B, C is actually the right answer, okay? I do hope you got that right. Now what is going to happen now, we'll be able to develop the knowledge is we're going to move on to the part two of this video. So after watching this video, I would like you to actually watch the part two of this because this is a long topic and it's so important that you understand it. So like I said, we've secured our knowledge, we've developed our knowledge. Now we're going to be securing our knowledge. Like I said, Let's move on to the part two of this video. Just click straight on the part two. Okay? See you later.